Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 14 of my program with Python 2.5 through 2.7 tutorial, the longest tutorial in history. <laughs> Not quite, but either way. If you haven't seen the previous tutorials, most definitely watch them before you watch this, otherwise you will be completely confused. Well, after my last tutorial, I got a lot of interaction with you guys, mainly because you were happy that I made you this little tool that allowed you to web scrape other websites, but you were unhappy with the results. Well, I'm going to correct that today. Here were the previous results, and again, we're hacking or web scraping the Huffington Post website right here. And what you were unhappy with was the fact that the results contained tags and these ampersand things, which I can't pronounce, and so forth and so on. And you sent me a whole bunch of emails complaining about that. So in this tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to get rid of them. Actually, I'm going to teach you two different ways. What we're going to do, now I'm going to create a function called clean html and this is going to be the way to clean it with the module you used in the previous tutorial called beautiful soup and i'm going to convert this to a string then i'm going to pass that string to beautiful soup and again these variable names mean nothing they're just made up and you can pass that string over there just by doing that and beautiful soup is going to help you strip out all of the offending tags that you do not like call the find function and remember, all of these are surrounded by paragraph tags because we specifically asked for all of the paragraphs from Beautiful Soup down below with the find all. We said find all the information that lies between paragraph tags. Well, since we did it that way, it's going to be real easy to find all of the offensive text. And we are just going to pass that information over and say get rid of everything or just get the text and not the HTML tags that lie between the paragraph tags. And also, one thing it's not going to get rid of, and here I'm actually going to be using a regular expression. Kind of getting the feeling you guys want another regular expression tutorial that goes into more detail. If you do, leave a comment below. If you don't know, I do everything based off of your responses. So here what I'm just simply saying is... I want anything, anything that starts with an ampersand and any number of characters and ends with a semicolon to be replaced with nothing. So this is just quotes with nothing between it. And then, of course, I have to pass I to it so that it knows what string to perform this change to. And also, I noticed there's a offensive thing called watch. And just to be cheap, I'm just going to type in watch. And that's going to get rid of that. All right, there's your code. Now, what you're going to have to do is call clean HTML on the strings before you print them to screen. Forgot to come up here, put the equal sign in. And then, of course, you want to return I, which is your edited version of the string or the paragraph. And then down here, you want to put I equals clean HTML. And if we do that, you can see that it is printing out to screen everything and stripping out all of the tags. There's no paragraph tags, there's no, none of the offensive ampersand codes, there's nothing here. Everything has been stripped away. And the only reason why college humor is showing up here is because it's not surrounded by tags, it's not meant to be taken out, and of course this is a reference to the original article. I'm not making any edits to that, I'm only making edits to the actual content, the original article. Now I'll show you, just to be different here, I'm going to show you a different way to do this using just regular expressions and not requiring beautiful soup. Just so you can kind of understand exactly how this is working. I'm going to still convert this to a string, except I'm going to create or edit this using just regular expressions. And I did get a question from one of you guys about why sometimes you put an R in front of a regular expression whenever you don't. You put an R in front of a regular expression whenever you want this to be considered as raw text, meaning that you're not going to have to backslash certain things such as stars and so forth and so on to be able to use them. So that's why you use R. And I'm basically saying with this regular expression that I want it to match for anything that starts with an opening carrot brace, but not if it is followed by another opening carrot brace, and then it can or it doesn't have to have a forward slash, but it absolutely must have a closing carrot brace. So that's what that regular expression is saying, and that's going to grab anything that is a tag for me. Then I'm just going to run the substitute method and replace anything that matches that regular expression with nothing. So I have two quotes there, and then 
I'll put in the substitutions that are going to get rid of the ampersand problem and the watch problem. And since I didn't change clean HTML, I can just run this guy. And you're going to see that I got exactly the same precise results as I did with Beautiful Soup. So that's actually pretty much how that part of Beautiful Soup works. And so that you guys completely understand exactly what I'm doing here, I'm going to actually going to come in here, go new, file, and this is going to be specific to that regular expression code that I just used. So I need import, re, and then I'm going to create my pattern here, my regular expression pattern that I'm going to be searching for, re.compile, raw text, and then I'm going to say I'm looking for an opening character brace, but I do not want to match it if it anywhere contains inside of it another opening caret brace before it gets to the closing caret brace. And then I'm going to step back inside of here, match all the information that lies inside of it, and then say that it can have a forward slash, but it does not have to. And the reason why I do that is, let's say, print pattern dot sub forward slash, click here, and I have, let's say, an H1 tag with class is equal to whatever. Just throwing something junky in there. And then it has a closing tag. But then it has something like 4 is less than 9. And then it has H1. That's why I'm doing this part right here, is to make sure that it catches this, that it's going to be able to find this and not get confused. And actually, if you run this, you'll see that it was able to properly grab, click here, and four is less than nine because this guy right here, what it did was it looked for this tag right here and this final tag right here and it said get rid of those and it did that with the substitution method that it lies within your regular expression modules. So I hope that was completely understandable. If you have any questions or needs for any other regular expression tutorial, leave a comment below. If there's any questions you have, of course, leave them there. And I do answer them to the best of my ability. Till next time.